Dark and Enlightened layers are a drastically underused tool and one of my absolute favorites for making quick edits and touch-ups that take my pieces from good to great. Not only that, but they can create interesting and unique effects that you won't see anyone else using in seconds. My name is Soul Canny, here's how to use them. By the way, did you know if you stick around till the end of my videos you can get access to freebies and extra content? We should do that. Anyway. The simplest way to explain the two layer types is as such. A darkened layer is like a normal layer, but it only affects colors lighter than the one you're using. It darkens whatever it touches. A lightened layer is the opposite, affecting any color that is darker than the one you're using. I'm going to quickly go over how I use these to create effects, and then show a demo of me using them. I think a lot of blending modes get overshadowed by multiply and add glow, but there's a lot of value in the lesser talked about ones. The simplest way I use it is for coloring line art. If you always keep your line art layer separate, you probably just color directly over it on a clipping layer or with alpha lock, but sometimes you'll realize after having added a ton of effects and overlays or on a painted work that it's still too dark. Well, you can easily fix it by taking the color you want it to be using lighten and drawing over it. The convenience of this is that you don't have to be precise. Your line art will likely be the darkest color, so you can just scribble over it or use a big brush and not have to worry. This is particularly handy if you like to blur your line art or keep it on separate layers. I also use them to add quick touch-up shadows. If I want to shade a part of an artwork quickly with a specific hue, I'll grab a darkened layer and draw straight over what I'd like it to apply to. If you're like me and very picky about your shadow colors, this is a great way of getting exactly what you want without having to fiddle with multiply. In other situations, I'll realize that one color of my drawing is too light and want to bring down the value of the piece as a whole, so I can just grab what I'd like my lightest tone to be and replace it. If I try this with multiply, I'd either have to affect the entire piece or go through the trouble of selecting the whole thing, wasting a lot of time. Atmosphere and effects are by far the most interesting use of darkened layers that I've found. I focus on colors a lot in my art, and sometimes I want to introduce another color into my composition. You'll see me do this later in my demo. I like that it gives me very fine control over what tone will be added and where, unlike other layer types which can make it impossible to get specific tones. It's kind of hard to give a single demo of this, but essentially you just have to play around with different colors and airbrushes on your piece until you get a feel of what I'm talking about. Another great use case is contrast. Inherently, if lighten can only make your darks lighter, and darken can only make your lights darker, everything will end up being closer to a mid-tone. This is great if one area of your piece, perhaps a part that is not meant to be the focus but has a lot of contrast in it, stands out too much. Use lighten or darken to take attention off these areas. This can also go the other way though. Everything being closer to a mid-tone allows for a greater chance of money colors. Counter this by checking your tones in grayscale, adjusting tone curves and contrast as needed, and now you've got an aesthetic piece with a trick you don't see often. Those are my main use cases summarized, so now to the demo. It's really just me explaining my thought process while working on a drawing, so enjoy. Okay, um, admittedly, this is pretty much the third time I'm doing this because I kept changing the way I wanted to make this video, but it's okay, we're just gonna roll with it. Um, so I have pretty much three layers given to me right now. I have a flat color, I have some, you know, minor shading with multiply, and a liner layer. And that's it. So let's talk about what I do with this. Well, usually the first thing I do with any of my drawings is I add subtle gradients. Uh, she already has some gradients built into her design. You can see, like, her hair kind of around her bangs and on her wings. Um, but I tend to use it in any like bigger area of color just to give it a little bit more life, uh, especially with lighten. I would add a gradient onto the shirt, kind of lighter, going to darker. So I can use a lighten layer for this and take that color that I want the shirt to be. I like to make everything blend into itself a little bit. I'll do the same thing around the shorts, but maybe I'll want to saturate it a little bit more around the shorts. And that's kind of, you can already see that this is kind of the convenience of a light and layer, is that I can saturate these colors and not worry about them touching the skin tone uh, because, you know, my, my flat color here is darker. I can do the same thing here. I can impact the hair color, but not the skin. Uh, well, here, I'll need to do something a little bit lighter for that. So something like that and yeah something like that and then i just lower the opacity 
and do essentially the inverse with a darken layer. Um, if I make this clipping, I just like to add a, a little subtle um, effect. Uh, very easy to overdo, so watch out. But you can see I'll add to the skin tone, a little bit of blush. And... Yeah. So that's like a, a very standard use case for my light and darken layers initially. Um, I just like that it adds a tiny bit more dimension. It kind of gives the flow of the shapes just a little bit more vivid. The next thing I would do is after I do my shading. So I did that off camera, but you know, it's it's pretty basic. So I don't, I don't think that'll be too much of an issue. And if I want to add maybe a soft edge around here, grab a color that's in between these two, two shades, which is what I would want my <laughs> the edge of my shadow to be. So something like this. And I'll just color over it. And you'll notice I'm not worrying at all about having a selection in this area or anything because I know it's not going to draw over it. And that's really, really convenient. Pump up the orange around here. Something like that. Maybe I want to do some quick touch-ups for cleanup. I could just grab the same color and Again, I'm already doing all of this on the same layer, which is pretty interesting. And why I absolutely adore this blending mode, because I can just do so much at once. And that's kind of my, my standard um, flats. Personally, I do a lot more work after I'm kind of done the drawing. So essentially, after I put all this together into a folder, which is always my process, that's when all the fun stuff happens. But I'm also going to color my line art here. I'm not even going to make this a clipping layer because I don't have to. Um, but I, I do need to make it a through layer. Hold on. So you can see that I'm just drawing on a, on a plain light in layer without any clipping. And it only applies to my line art. A couple spots that I missed. I can just make another one. Yeah, so there you go. And now comes the fun part, uh, playing with all the effects. So as I mentioned earlier, um, I tend to do like these big effects when I want to introduce another color. She has this very subtle accent of green, which you can see isn't actually green, but that's my little secret. No one has to know. Um, and say I just want to add in some more of that. I can do kind of this dusty look by sprinkling it around my drawing. I can give it some more depth by making the parts that are further back a little lighter, a little blurrier. Um, alternatively, I can use a brighter color. Something like this and add an ambient shadow. If there's kind of blue in the area, maybe she's outside or something. And give it a little bit more life. I'd probably apply that after I apply a shadow layer though. Something like this. And because I changed the tone, I'm probably going to change the value of this too. And you can already see how you can get some very interesting effects using this. Look at that. You really just have to play around with this. I mean, you can really push it very far if you just play and play and play. There's a lot of stuff that can be done with these that can't be done with a color dodge layer or whatever else. And it's not that they're like my everything layer, you know? It, it's not like I'm saying replace, multiply, never use it again, you have to be using this, but I definitely use these often enough that I think that more people should use them and 
kind of embrace them in their workflow. Because it's just something you don't really hear people talk about, you know? And some subsurface scattering here. You can also get lighter effects as well. Uh, maybe you'll want more orange. You can a uh, much warmer effect. These at different levels. The true strength comes with combining these with other layers. I'm trying not to because I kind of want to give you guys a demo that's purely using them. But for the sake of example, I think it is worth mentioning. You can see I have these like black parts of my liner that I didn't color and look how easy those are to solve now. <laughs> and this is exactly the kind of time where I would use it because when I'm halfway into rendering a drawing, I don't want to go back to, you know, all my other layers and search for the right thing to edit it. I just want to get it done quickly without really thinking and this is the way to do it. I don't know, it just really appeals to me. And all these different kinds of vibes that you can get are just so unique and interesting. Um, and, and definitely worth trying out. So if you haven't already, do it. It's worth it. You can make some cool stuff and it's, it's an interesting exercise if nothing else. And play around and see what you can make, see what you like and don't like, and maybe you'll find something that I haven't. Uh, maybe you'll figure out some new way of using it, and if you do, I encourage you to share. I'd love to see. But yeah. Okay, hi. Uh, if this tutorial helped you in any way, or if you have any questions, please let me know. I wasn't really sure how to structure this video, so feedback is appreciated. If you make something using a dark and or light and layer, at me on Twitter so I can see it. My username is soul underscore canny, linked in the description below. And about that little surprise I mentioned, the PSD file for this drawing will also be on my Ko-fi for free, along with an additional demo that wasn't in the video. Take a look.